Hi, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. In the last few videos, we discussed the definition and scope, different techniques of analysis, methods of expressing concentration, primary and secondary standards, and preparation and standardization of various molar and normal solutions. In this lesson, we shall discuss the sources and types of errors. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to learn to define an error, classify different sources of error and the different types of error. Introduction to Errors An error from the Latin word error meaning to wandering is an action which is inaccurate or incorrect. In some usages, an error is synonymous with a mistake. In statistics, error refers to the difference between the measured and the true value. In other words, an error is a deviation from accuracy or correctness. A mistake is an error caused by a fault. The fault being misjudgment, carelessness or forgetfulness. Therefore, the aim of an analyst is to obtain a result as near to the true value as possible. If the analyst has no idea about the accuracy and precision of the method and the possible sources of error, he will not know how correct his results can be or he will have a poor level of confidence regarding the results that he has obtained. A quantitative analytical procedure is not only a collection of operations such as filtration, weighing, titration, etc. The analyst or the person carrying out the determination must know the theoretical principles on which the method is based, the possibility of interference due to presence of other substances and the possible sources of error. The term error is used to show the difference between measured and true value. When a measurement is made, it is not always possible to completely eliminate the error even when the analyst making the measurement is an expert working with the apparatus of best quality. However, attempts are made to minimize the error. To do so, one must know the magnitude of error in his measurement, which is the difference between the observed value and the true value. Since true values are never known, one has to make use of most probable or standard value. The standard value can be obtained by two methods, namely absolute method and comparative method. In the absolute method, the sample in quest is synthesized using known quantities of the constituents and thus a primary standard is obtained. Hence, the true values for the amount of different constituents are known. Now, the sample is analyzed by some method, the observed values for the quantities of the constituents are recorded. Knowing the true and the observed values, the error of the method can be calculated. In some cases of comparative method, as in the case of a mineral or an ore, it is not possible to prepare the synthetic sample. In such a case, the analytical data provided by some standard agency is obtained. The values provided in this data are the standard values for the quantities of the different constituents present in the sample. The difference in the observed and the standard value gives the error of the method used for analysis. With the help of the two methods described above, one can find out how much error is involved in his procedure of determination. In order to keep the value of error as small as possible, it is necessary to know the type of error and their possible causes. The sources of errors Common sources of error include instrumental, personal or human errors, procedural and environmental errors. All of these errors can be either systematic or random depending on how they affect the results. Instrumental errors. All measuring devices are potential sources of systematic errors. For example, pipettes, burettes and volumetric flasks may hold or deliver volumes slightly different from those indicated by their graduations. These differences arise from using glassware at a temperature that differs significantly from the calibration temperature, from distortions in container walls due to heating while drying, from errors in the original calibration or from contaminants on the inner surfaces of the containers. Calibration eliminates most systematic errors of this type. Electronic instruments are subject to instrumental systematic errors. 
दीज कैन हैव मेनी सोर्सेस फॉर एग्जाम्पल एरर्स में एमर्ज एज द वोल्टेज ऑफ ए बैटरी ऑपरेटेड पावर सप्लाई डिक्रीजेस विथ यूज एरर्स कैन ऑल्सो अकर इफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट आर नॉट कैलिब्रेटेड फ्रीक्वेंटली और कैलिब्रेटेड इन करेक्टली द एनलिस्ट और एक्सपेरिमेंटर मे ऑल्सो यूज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट अंडर कंडीशन इन विच एरर्स आर लार्ज फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए पी एच मीटर यूज इन स्ट्रांगली एसिडिक मीडिया इज प्रोन टू एन एसिड एरर टेम्परेचर चेंजेस काज वेरिएशन इन मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉम्पोनेंट विच कैन लीड टू ड्रिफ्ट और एरर्स some instruments are susceptible to noise induced from the alternating current that is ac power lines and this noise may influence precision and accuracy in many cases errors of these types are detectable and correctable personal or human errors many measurements require personal judgments examples include estimating the position of a pointer between two scale divisions the color of a solution at the end point in a titration or the level of a liquid with respect to a graduation in a pipette or burette judgments of this type are often subject to systematic unidirectional errors for example one person may read a pointer consistently high another may be slightly slow in activating a timer and the third may be less sensitive to color changes an analyst who is insensitive to color changes tends to use excess reagent in a volumetric analysis analytical procedures should always be adjusted so that any known physical limitations of the analyst cause negligibly small errors procedural errors or errors of the method these are the most serious errors of an analysis most of the above errors can be minimized or corrected for but errors that are inherent in the method cannot be changed unless the conditions of the determination are altered some sources of methodological errors include co-precipitation of impurities slight solubility of a precipitate side reactions incomplete reactions and impurities in reagents sometimes correction can be relatively simple for example by running a reagent blank a blank determination is an analysis on the added reagents only it is a standard practice to run such blanks and to subtract the results from those for the sample but a good blank analysis alone cannot guarantee correct measurements in the method for example response to an analyst present in the sample other than the intended analyte the method must be altered thus when errors become intolerable another approach to the analysis must be made sometimes we are forced to accept a given method in the absence of a better one environmental errors these errors are due to the external condition of the measuring devices such types of errors mainly occur due to the effect of temperature pressure humidity dust vibration or because of the magnetic or electrostatic field the corrective measures employed to eliminate or to reduce these undesirable effects are the arrangement should be made to keep the conditions as constant as possible using the equipment which is free from these effects by using the techniques which eliminate the effect of these disturbances and by applying the computed corrections the types of errors there are three types of error associated with the laboratory analysis they are number 1 systematic or determinate error number 2 random or indeterminate error and number 3 gross error systematic error systematic error also called determinate error that arises from a flaw in equipment or the design of an experiment there are errors that were known to have occurred or at least were determined later to have occurred in the course of the laboratory work they may arise from avoidable sources such as contamination wrongly calibrated instruments reagent impurities instrumental malfunctions poor sampling techniques errors in calibrations etc results from laboratory work in which avoidable determinate errors are known to have occurred must be rejected or if the error was a calculation error recalculated they may also arise from unavoidable sources an error that is known to have occurred but was unavoidable is called a bias 
Such an error occurs each time a procedure is executed and thus its effect is usually known and a correction factor can be applied. For example, if it is determined that a calibration mark on the piece of high precision glassware, for example a pipette, is slightly out of place, the same error is repeated each time this pipette is used. In this case, one can determine the exact error and then apply a correction factor to all results in which the pipette was used. If you conduct the experiment again in exactly the same manner, the error is reproducible. In principle, systematic error can be discovered and corrected, although this may not be easy. For example, a pH meter that has been standardized incorrectly produces a systematic error. Suppose you think that the pH of the buffer used to standardize the pH meter is 7, but it is really 7.08. Then all your pH readings will be 0.08 pH unit too low. When you read a pH of 5.60, the actual pH of the sample is 5.68. This systematic error could be discovered by using a second buffer of known pH to test the meter. Another systematic error arises from an uncalibrated burette. The manufacturer's tolerance for a class A 50 ml burette is 0.05 ml. When you think you have delivered 29.43 ml, the real volume could be anywhere from 29.38 to 29.48 ml and still be within tolerance. One way to correct for an error of this type is to construct a calibration curve. To do this, deliver distilled water from the burette into a flask and weigh it. Determine the volume of water from its mass. Apply a correction factor of 0.03 ml to the measured volume of 29.43 ml. The actual volume delivered is 29.43 minus 0.03 is equal to 29.40 ml. A key feature of systematic error is that it is reproducible. For the burette just discussed, the error is always 0.03 ml when the burette reading is 29.43 ml. Systematic error may always be possible in some regions and always negative in others. With care and cleverness, you can detect and correct a systematic error. Systematic errors have a definite value and as assignable cause and are of the same magnitude for replicate measurements made in the same way. Systematic errors lead to bias in measurement results. Note that bias affects all the data in a set in the same way and that it bears a sign. Random errors. Random error is also called indeterminate error that occur due to chance. They are errors that are not specifically identified and are therefore impossible to avoid. Since the errors cannot be specifically identified, results arising from such errors cannot be immediately rejected or compensated for as in the case of determinate errors. Rather, a statistical analysis must be performed to determine whether the results are far enough off track so as to merit rejection. Random error has an equal chance of being positive or negative. It is always present and cannot be corrected. There is a random error associated with reading a scale. Different people reading the scale report a range of values representing their subjective interpolation between the markings. One person reading the same instrument several times might report several different readings. Another random error results from electrical noise in an instrument. Positive and negative fluctuations occur with approximately equal frequency and cannot be completely eliminated. Gross errors. Gross errors differ from systematic and random errors. They usually occur only occasionally or often large and may cause a result to be either high or low. They are often the product of human errors. For example, if part of a precipitate is lost before weighing, analytical results will be low. Touching a weighing bottle with your fingers after its empty mass is determined will cause a high mass reading for a solid weighed in the contaminated bottle. Gross errors lead to outliers, results that appear to differ markedly from all other data in a set of replicate measurements. 
these are the references of the lesson that's all in this lesson the sources and types of errors in the next video we will learn the methods of minimizing errors till then never stop learning and never stop watching my videos thank you for watching this video